Welcome to the Focus on Why podcast. I'm Amy Rowlandson and I ask my guests one simple question, why? Focusing on the importance of why, I share with you the relatable, uplifting and inspiring conversations I have with people from all walks of life. This podcast will encourage you to focus on your why to enable and empower you to achieve the success you desire. Have a purpose, have a plan, focus on why. Hey Sam, welcome to the podcast. Welcome to Focus on Why. Thank you. Thanks Amy, nice to be here. So tell us a bit more about yourself Sam. So uh, my name's Sam Rattling. I am Europe's leading LinkedIn expert helping companies to generate uh, leads from the LinkedIn platform and to completely understand how to do something called social selling. Social selling. It was new to me very recently. So until I picked up your amazing book, LinkedIn Bound. Wow. (gasps) Blew me away. In fact, I I reached out straight away um, on LinkedIn and connected Mm -hmm. with you and we had a bit of a, a nice sort of conversation and you said I think you said haha it's awesome that I <laughs> had really enjoyed it I was reading it in an air float at the time and it was very very um insightful how can I say and I've got so many notes scribbled across the pages and I'm slowly working <laughs> through all my action points so tell us a bit more about the eight social selling strategies that you include in that so I've been um learning about LinkedIn since 2003 which is when it effectively launched so it's actually even older than facebook so it's one of the oldest social media platforms out there i used to be in the recruitment industry so i learned my skills from a very um you know early adopter phase as a recruiter and then 2010 i started teaching people about the power of social selling and linkedin so those eight social selling strategies have been developed really over the course of 15 plus years of mastering this platform Um, So I think it's really important for people to realize that it's, you know, you can't just do one thing on LinkedIn. It's like pieces of the puzzle. So when I created the eight social selling strategies, I wanted them all to make sense for people to be able to really practically implement what I share. Um, And those eight strategies are, you know, everything from kind of understanding the core principles of how to how to do business on LinkedIn um, profile posting, um, you know, understanding the importance of you know building your positioning as a go-to expert ha- habits are really important consistency um it's a really great quote by bruce lee which is long-term consistency trumps short-term intensity and um, i think that's the biggest thing on linkedin is getting those daily weekly monthly habits right so that you're not spending hours and hours of time on it but you're spending a little bit often um to get the results that you want that's amazing and i think One of the misnomers that were probably connected to LinkedIn is that it has been uh, linked to recruitment. And a lot of people think they only want to go on there if they're looking for a new job. And that is probably one of the biggest (laughs) sort of uh, falsities to to the whole of LinkedIn. And I'm trying to grab people kicking and screaming to get onto it because they say, oh, no, I don't need a new job or whatever. And they just said, you know, it's, it's not that at all. It's probably the most insightful business mastermind type platform where you can connect with people across so many different industries. Mm. And I, I absolutely love it. I, I just really enjoy it. And you're saying about the consistency, I, I am very consistent because I, I get a lot out of it. I put a lot in and it's, it's a two-way process. Yeah, for sure. It's a, I always tell people, don't go to LinkedIn to get, go to LinkedIn to give. Nice. Um, because that is, you know, if you go in with that mentality of giving and adding value and building relationships, you're going to get a bit, much better outcome than if you just go in there to pitch, sell and, uh, and get. And I think one of the big takeaways from your book was it's just so simple to follow that you're so practical with your, your actions. And I've just been working through them methodically mm-hmm. and just making that little bit of difference every day. And I think you, you mentioned in there to do something for 90 days consistently. Yeah, 90 days is of implementing what I share is usually where the magic starts to happen. I think people are looking a lot for instant gratification and you know they want leads now and they want new customers now, but it takes time to build a personal brand. It takes time for you to build a really solid network of people in your target market. It takes time to build relationships. So there are certain things that you can get instant gratification from, like your social selling index, um, as you've already seen. But, you know, it does take some time and 90 days consistency will usually see you shift um, your outcomes and your results. 
So let's explain what the social selling index is and, and how mm -hmm. to find your social selling index score. Yeah, so most people don't realize that you actually have a score out of 100 points um, called a social selling index or SSI for short. Um, you can go check out what yours is by going to linkedin.com forward slash sales forward slash SSI. So go check out your score, see where you're at at the moment. Um, it is made up of four different main areas. Um, so your score is weighted 25 points in four key categories. The first category being establish your professional brand. So that's the orange one when you look at your um, score. And that's to do with how effectively filled out your profile is, because there are 15 different elements of your LinkedIn profile that you need to get sorted. And the second part of that is the content side of things. So establishing what your professional brand is about consistently posting original content onto LinkedIn, not sharing other people's content, that's cheating, sharing original content and becoming that kind of um, go-to person through your through your consistent content. So that's the first score. The second one, the purple 25 points, that's all to do with um, finding the right people. So in LinkedIn's eyes, are you connecting with and building a network of people who are relevant to your industry and the type of people that you're targeting? So that's all to do with filling your sales pipeline, prospecting and adding proactively, adding people who you want in your network, not just relying on those random requests that you get through from others, but actually proactively building your network with the right types of people. The third one is called engage with insights and that's the red score, 25 points again. And that's to do with engagement as in how much you liking, commenting, sharing, and being an active participant really in the community that is LinkedIn on other people's posts. Um, to be considered a solid piece of engagement, you'd want to be commenting with a minimum seven words on someone else's post. That will help their post, but also realize that on your own post is that you want to drive a conversation really underneath the post so that you get lots of engagement and the algorithm loves that. And the final one really is a combination of doing the top three really well, which is all to do with building trusted relationships. So if you are creating great content, have a great profile, are regularly engaging, are building your network and are building trusted relationships, then your SSI score is going to be massively improved. The magic happens in the high 70s and ideally into the 80s. That's where most people start to see the best results. Um, there's no one I know that's got an SSI in the 80s that is not getting business from LinkedIn. Um, so that's usually where the magic really starts to happen in terms of inbound leads from your content and proactive leads generated from prospecting. So when I first read the book, I, I immediately checked out my score. I'm a bit, little bit competitive, so I, I was like, <laughs> and this, this way I get to compete with myself, so it's even better. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I started out on day one with a score of 66, and my build relationships was maxed out, so 25 mm -hmm. out of 25. And I think you say in your book that that's not the norm. So I, yeah. I was like, oh, I was really excited, and it was like, oh, a little bit deflated. <laughs> Um, but the other ones are all hanging around um, the sort of 13, 12, 14 mark. So I, I had started with a score of 66 and then posting, a, but I was top 1% in my industry and I was in top 20% in the network. So, okay, so that, had, that was my starting point. I started following lots of your tips and I started edging up, getting better. I, mm -hmm. I realized there were lots of elements, as you said, the 15 parts that you can sort of pad out and, and fill out with the right information. A lot of things there weren't quite right. They weren't on brand. They weren't focused to exactly what I wanted to deliver. So uh, lots of tweaking. I needed to do that. And I have got my score up. I've got it up three points now. Woohoo, three points. But I, I haven't got the sales navigator. And I, I thought, let me see how high I can get first and mm -hmm. then for a free version. And also, I've had two months of being completely consistent on posting and getting um, lots of connections, relevant connections. Yeah. So that's where I've been working hard. And, and yes, I've only gone up three points, but it actually takes quite a lot, I think, initially to that, that slow curve. Yeah. And I can see it then going up massively. Yeah, for sure. But I'm really enjoying the engagement. I'm really, in, at, at the moment, predominantly my clients don't know that they need to be on LinkedIn. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> so that, that's where I'm, I, I'm struggling with getting inbound business right now. But I'm, I'm moving my clients from other platforms onto LinkedIn yeah. slowly. 
And I think that, yeah, I mean, it, it, it is, you know, and it does take time to learn it too, you know, like you'll try little things. I mean, you've got lots of things to work through from what you're learning from me. Um, but it, it, you know, it's going to take time. You know, you can't do everything in one go. It's like anything in business. You've got to be patient. Rome wasn't built in a day. So you can't go from like not being really mastering LinkedIn to suddenly like, oh, I've got this. Um, yeah. You know, I was training a guy on my three day masterclass last week and um, he messaged me this morning. He can't believe it because he was already in the 80s and he wasn't quite, you know, he wasn't quite getting it. But he just did a post last week because he just got braver with his content and I gave him some really good ideas on what he could do. And his most recent post um, has had 395 comments. It's got thousands and thousands of views on it. And his personal brand has just gone through the roof because he just got a bit more daring with being a bit more, um, you know, a bit more authentic and being himself um, and sharing, you know, something that was quite controversial and um, particularly in the current climate. Um, but yeah, it was an amazing post. Mm -hmm. And um, he's just, he can't believe that the, the visibility and he's getting now on the, on the platform. Um, I think his profile views have gone up something like 700% this, this week, just from, you know, just from one amazing post that went viral. So that's, that's absolutely the case. And also aligning yourself with other thought leaders and, and, not, I guess, piggybacking. So you, if I, I recently posted a comment on one of Arianna Huffington's posts and that got so much traction. I think I got the most amount of likes and comments off my comment on one of hers. Yes. Um, and so that has given me a huge new audience that, that really interesting. And what I love is is the, the conversations you can have. They, they mm -hmm. Especially while we're all sort of in this strange world of being disconnected we could be connected virtually and i think that's yes. such a, a powerful exciting thing to be connected with anybody around the world i've got recently i've had clients who've come through and they are worldwide now and that's the difference i can coach virtually um, across italy australia and it, it's great uh, unbelievable uh, so you just don't know who's watching you, you just never know, honestly. I mean, I think people don't realize that when you post on LinkedIn, it's not just your first degree network that's seeing it. The minute that you get a like or a comment on a post, you are suddenly putting your brand into that person's network, just like you did on the Ar Ariana Huffington post. Yeah. Um, you know, just by you engaging with a piece of her content, your visibility with her network has gone through the roof. So it's very important to understand this whole ecosystem that you know, you could get an inbound opportunity from someone in your second or third degree network. Um, I mean, I always share the story of my, my biggest customer. Um, I do a lot of work with brother. Um, and I've trained now over a hundred people in their sales teams in 23 countries. I've trained 50 people in their marketing division and all of their MDs across every country in Europe. And, you know, that was a, a multi six figure contract for our business. And it came because somebody in my first degree network was engaging with my content who happened to be connected to them. So they weren't even in my, they weren't even in my network. They weren't on my radar. They'd never heard of me before, but because somebody in my network, first degree was commenting on my posts, you know, that opportunity came my way off the back of, you know, somebody engaging with my content. So you just never know who's watching. You never know who you're impacting. And I always say to people, don't worry too much if your content isn't getting the traction that you want. Maybe it's not getting the amount of likes, reactions, views that you currently want. But somebody could be out there watching you and following you. And in three months from now, they could message you and say, oh, I've been watching you, Amy. I love everything you're doing. I've been following you on LinkedIn. But they may never have liked or commented on a single piece of content. And that's OK. So it's just about being consistent and showing up, being visible and demonstrating your credibility. And that's exactly what happened to me recently, where someone contacted me completely out of the blue, didn't know them, messaged me saying, can we can we start some coaching? And I'm like, well, normally I have a, a call first and then we go through a whole sort of step system. She said, no, 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 you don't need to sell anything to me. You don't need to convince me. I've been listening to your podcast. I'm, I'm in. I'm, I'm ready. And I was, so there you go. You just don't. And they had never, ever even contacted me yeah. or message or anything. So. Yeah. So interesting so just understanding what you're putting out in your profile your headline and to try and build that target market have you got some top tips for people there absolutely i mean first off you've got to really understand your niche and who it is you really want to focus on within linkedin so i always tell people to really think about your ideal client and the word ideal is an acronym um it's a framework i created so the i stands for industry so which industry business sector or vertical do you really want to focus on I get that you could sell to everyone and anyone, but you need to really pick something because 
if you sell to anyone and everyone, you're selling to no one. So in your LinkedIn environment, think about what industries are you passionate about? What have you got experience in? Where is your credibility? Maybe look at your last 10 or your top 10 customers and figure out um, you know, what industry sector should you, should you be targeting? Um, I had an SEO guy in my masterclass recently and he realized that 60% 60, 60 of his clients were all NGOs and charities. And he was like, well, maybe I should become the guy who does SEO for NGOs and charities. And I was like, well, there's an idea. So that's what he's doing now. So he's just specializing now. I mean, they work all over the world. They have some amazing case studies. And now he's the SEO guy for NGOs. So pick your industry, pick your sector. The next piece then is your demographic. So what size of company do you want to go for? What, how long have they been established? How many employees do they have? What's their turnover? Um, you know, those are the kind of things that you need to think about in terms of your target market. Next would be, who do you want in that company? So do you want the board of directors? Do you want the CEO? Do you want HR or finance or operations or just the business owner? So think about who you need job title wise within those organizations. And then the final two things are the, the attributes of that target market. So what kind of culture do they have? What kind of ambitions do they have? You know, do they align with your culture? So if you're, you know, fun and fast paced and, you know, you'll tend to attract clients that are like you. Mm -hmm. So think about the type of companies you want to target. Are they scale up tech businesses? Are they um, fast paced and dynamic and in massive growth? Or are they more traditional set in their ways type businesses? And finally, where do you want them? I mean, do you want them? I'm sure you could do business anywhere. I mean, you, you and I can work internationally, Amy, of course, but you know, you might only want companies that are 50 mile radius of your back doorstep. And obviously LinkedIn, you can find all of these companies and you can pick and choose, but you're, there's no point in you doing a really great profile or putting out great content unless you really truly understand your target market. Um, and that's one of the biggest mistakes I see people make is they're trying to create content and put out a profile, which is trying to serve too many people to so just be really focused on who you want. Fantastic. And I think just understanding that it's going to take some consistency, some patience. It's not going to happen yeah. overnight. This is something that you've been doing for a long time. You mentioned since 2003. Three. <laughs> Wow. So, okay. But that, we're all playing catch up. That's all right. We'll get there. Well, you know, it's, I mean, I, I mean, I can share story after story of people that I've just implemented and, you know, my business partner, actually is my business partner now, but my business partner, Nick, um, two years ago came to one of my courses as a client and he was a social media dinosaur. Didn't know, um, didn't know anything about LinkedIn, thought it was a CV platform and just, did for 90 days what I told him to do in 15 minutes a day. And in 90 days, he generated 1.36 million pounds in consulting business. Wow. There you go. And I mean, for him, that's about 10, 11 customers. So think about that in your terms, right? So if you're listening to this, that might be like completely out of your realm, but 10, 11 new customers in 90 days from scratch, having never done anything on LinkedIn. So you know, those have gone on now to generate millions of pounds in business for him. And now we're business partners because he believes in it so much and he believes in the power of social selling so much. So it's really important that you, you know, just apply again, consistency is going to be the key word here, but just do it. Like just don't, don't try and go mad for a few weeks and then do nothing. You're better off doing little and often um, post every day, connect with new people every day, comment, like share every day, like just basic stuff, but it will work. The rest of your sort of um, acronym is, is ideal. So you've got ID, demographic, what's next? Yeah. Oh, that was the attributes. Oh no, sorry, experience. So uh, industry, I'll go, I'll summarize it. Yeah. So the I stands for industry, the D stands for demographic, the um, E stands for experience. So the job title, roles, responsibilities of the people that you want. The A is for attributes and the L is for location. So that's the acronym ideal to give you an idea of thinking about your target market. And just get real clarity about that target market. Yeah. Focus on, on the who, focus on the why. So you're, you're talking about what people do a lot of in the book and they make a lot of mistakes. And mm -hmm. how can people sort of pivot away from the mistakes and just really start to build and break through the ceiling of, of getting some impact or finding the magic, as you said earlier? So my biggest thing is to stop selling I mean, it just drives me mad how so many people out there just don't get that 
connecting with somebody on LinkedIn and then immediately spamming them with a pitch in their inbox is going to actually work. Um, it just drives me crazy. So if you are doing that, please stop. Um, yeah. Social selling is about, it's about the art of selling without selling. So social selling is about building your brand, positioning you as the go-to person, attracting people towards you, and people will come to you because they value what you're offering and because they see you as somebody credible and very visible to them. And it's about getting somebody to the point where when they are ready to buy, that they think of you first. Because not everybody, let's face it, 98% of people when you approach them are not going to be in the market for your product and service right this second. But when they are, you want them to think of you first. And that's the power of social selling. So if you are currently sending horrible inbox messages to people uh, and then wondering why LinkedIn's not working for you, then that would be a big, big thing to stop Thank doing. Thank you, people, for doing that. <laughs> <laughs> And so yeah, it's absolutely that. So so stop doing the, the actual selling, and yeah. also try and think um, how not just put one question out. Try and use your thirteen hundred characters wisely. To craft yeah, so you're talking about content now, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, when it comes to content, I mean, I I, I share fourteen different content themes, and there are seven different types of LinkedIn posts that many people don't even realise they're just using one or two. Um, so content is absolutely king, but I have a different view on the world that is connection is queen. So yes, you need to put out content and yes, you need to post, but you need to make sure it connects with your target market. So coming back to the ideal client, you need to make sure it connects with the audience that you're trying to aim at. Um, you get, as you say, up to 1300 characters per post, use it. Um, LinkedIn's algorithm loves long form copy. Um, LinkedIn makes its money by keeping people in LinkedIn. Don't ever forget that. So if you're posting blogs, articles, YouTube links, anything that takes the reader away from LinkedIn, stop doing that too, because you know, the algorithm is not going to give any visibility to a post that takes people away from the LinkedIn platform, which is where LinkedIn makes its money. So, um, you know, being, think about your content, be engaging. Um, a great little tip is to ask a question on a post. So create a long form content post with a video or some pictures and asking a question can drive great responses it needs to be smart i mean you need to think about having an easy to answer question that's not gonna you know require people to put too much personal stuff or to not answer it because they don't want to be seen in public answering it but i'll give you a great example my friend um, simon he did a post recently and he's in kind of safety within the airline industry and he posted a question asking, what does the color orange mean to you? And he had a, it was a, you know, he had some content with it as well, but it's something he asked at the beginning of his training courses. And it's an easy to answer question. You can't get it wrong because everybody has their own yeah. view on it. It drove debate and the, the descriptions underneath were quite lengthy. And that's really what you want from engagement. You want at least seven words underneath from every post. And he was replying back to everybody and it was just a really simple question. But I think it, I think the last count, it had over 20,000 views on the post. Wow. That's um, awesome. yeah. In about two weeks and it's still going today. Like, it, you know, that's the great thing about content on LinkedIn. It just lasts forever. So, you know, you put something up on Facebook and if you haven't paid to boost it, it doesn't, it disappears within a few hours. Um, Twitter, the same disappears, but you know, LinkedIn, you can put a piece of content up there and every new like and comment puts it back to the top of the newsfeed again and keeps it going. So you can have a post that lasts an hour, not an hour, and a week and a half, two weeks, easy, um, just by keeping the comments going and keeping the engagement going. That's so true. I, I recently posted one. It had really good response. So it was sort of three or 4,000 views quite quickly. And then it sort of slow down and then you can tell the people that aren't on LinkedIn very often because they've just come back on and it's come back in again so come back in again yeah and even just by you know maybe not even responding with your comments like all in one go you know just doing that spreading those out over time so you know I purposefully don't answer every single comment on the same day because if you just go and do a couple on one day and a couple on the next day um you know you keep the post going longer and longer so great top tip so Tell me about the hashtags and, and trending. What is trending good? 
So hashtag is a quite a new thing on LinkedIn. They've only just really started last year or so. It's been quite a, a new thing coming. Um, I do love hashtags for a number of reasons. Um, hashtags on LinkedIn, as you say, can help you to trend in the newsfeed. So I believe you've had a few trending posts, have you, Amy? I, have, I even wrote a post on trending, which then Did you? yet trended that post. But <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping that that trending post would trend, but no, I had a, I've had four or five now in the last uh, three weeks, four weeks. So yeah, yes. one week. Good job. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I would definitely use hashtags that aren't you know majorly po- overpopulated, so more niche ones. So for example, hashtag sales is followed by five point nine million people. So the chances of you, you know, trending on hashtag sales is slim to none. So you want to pick things that are a bit more, um, you know. So for example, I tr- I use social selling hashtag social selling on my posts and when i first started using the hashtag it had about 2000 followers but it's now up to about 30000 followers and what people don't realize is that when you use hashtags and you start trending it means that people that follow that hashtag on linkedin are more likely to see your content and you know you you just don't know who's going to be following a particular hashtag that you are that you're using so I got a request for a podcast in Australia from somebody that saw my content because he was following hashtag social selling and he wasn't in my first, second or third degree network. We weren't connected in any way whatsoever. Um, so it can help you to get visibility with people that don't even know who your brand is at the moment. Um, the other thing that hashtags are great for if you just search for them in the, in the, in the search bar on LinkedIn is you can find prospects. You know, If you're following a particular niche, knowing that somebody else is following that, that keyword it just, you know, it'll open up potential prospects for you and potential people that are good to follow for their content too. So it's, uh, it's pretty, pretty so you're powerful. Advocating, you're advocating visibility, credibility, because then it creates opportunity. That's well, right. Yeah. See what I did there. A little bit of a I know. process. You're such a great student, Amy. <laughs> oh, <wait. laughs> I was always that sort of geeky. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> that was me in school as well. I was like, yes, me, me. I know the answer. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, no, I, I, and it is a good process, the visibility, credibility, opportunity, because you're, you're, you need to be visible, otherwise you're not, you haven't got a business, especially at the moment where we're all sort of in, in, inbound, <laughs> we, we, we're, not, we're not allowed to go out and network at the moment, but we, we need to be visible online, and that's an ongoing thing, that whatever happens you need to be, and, and, and LinkedIn uh, acts as your virtual ambassador 24-7, it's, it's 24-7, there. networking when you're asleep, it's networking when you're on holiday, yeah. it's amazing. It is amazing, and I, I'm so excited to sort of get into that stratosphere that you've worked yourself through to. Explain a little bit more about how you got started in this particular business, Sam. So, um, I mean, I've been teaching LinkedIn for over a decade now, kind of stepping on stages. In the beginning, when I was still running my recruitment business, it was always a side gig. Um, I've lived in five different countries. I came back to the UK in 2016 and I thought, right, I've got a couple of choices here. And I had a few different ideas as to what I could do. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to double down and just become like the dominating force when it comes to LinkedIn. And I had at the time no network back in the UK. I had no visibility, no credibility. I had, you know, a big LinkedIn network, but they weren't, they weren't particularly relevant for me positioning myself as a go-to expert. So I thought, you know what, there's nobody that's really claimed that flag. And I decided that I was going to commit to becoming the number one um, expert in LinkedIn started my business from a um pretty crappy situation if that's the right word um hadn't was pretty broke came back to the uk um couldn't even afford to get my furniture out of storage so we spent six weeks with three kids no no furniture in the house and i all i could afford was this little fold-up table desk thing from b&m and it was 17 pound night and i've still got it i still bring it on stages and things when i share my story and um I have very fond memories of that little desk and a really old Mac that was on its last legs. And I thought, and I just, I just started getting to work. I thought, you know what? I've just got to get out there and just start building my personal brand. So I went and spoke as, as many events as I could get in front of. I didn't care what size the audience was and started putting out great content and just started to really, really focus on building my business up. And I think within six, 12 months, we've got it to like 3K a month. And I found a business coach, started working with a coach. So I highly advocate getting a business coach and um, took my business to 10K a month. And then um, May 2018, I had an investor approach me actually through LinkedIn. 
And um, he said, look, I think you've got something great. You know, I love your brand. I really want to help you to scale. Um, and I'd, I had started an outsourced um, lead generation agency at the time. And that was the bit that he saw the opportunity to scale with me, which is, you know, an area of the business that doesn't necessarily need me, um, which is always the challenge when you run an expert business, like you're the, you're the face of the business. So um, he came on board and uh, we started building the business up. We got the business up to 30K a month. And six months in, uh, he orchestrated a hostile takeover and I lost everything. Wow. Um, I lost my team. I lost all my clients, literally had to go back to the, back to the drawing board. Um, and it was, it was probably one of the hardest couple of months in business I've ever had. Um, you know, we all go through ups and downs and adversity and everything else. So I really had to draw on all my resilience and all my leadership and all the, the personal development I'd spent years and years doing because ultimately it's a mindset game business. And um, I just had to pick myself up and go again. And I sat in front of one of my business mentors and he said, there's one thing he doesn't have, Sam, he doesn't have you. Um, so get out there and go build it again, faster, better, stronger. And I look back on it now and I see it as the biggest gift that anyone could have given me. Um, because, you know, imagine being able to start from scratch and look at all the things you did wrong and all the failures that you had and all the mistakes that you made and just not make them again. And within three months, I'd got the business back up to where it was. And in fact, last year we did, I think four, five, five times my best year in the previous business um, from a standing still start. And in fact, the, the opportunity to work with brother came in the day after I registered the company at uh, company's house on, as an inbound lead. I think that is probably such a reassuring story for people to hear right now. And congratulations, well done. You know, Thank you. pat on the back, because I think that is to go from the the angst, the, the the sort of stress that you must have been experiencing to then realizing that actually the hard assets aren't really what counts. It's the soft assets, it's it's you, it's you and you are the one. And that is why it is so important for people to recognize their skills and they can be transferred into other areas to, to understand that, you know, you are you and you have something to offer and you, you know, literally, as you said, it became a gift. So yeah. you will say thank you to that person at one point, but at the moment it probably still. Oh, yeah, I've, I've, uh, we're about 18 months on now, but uh, yeah, no, I've gone through the whole, I've done a lot of work and forgiveness work and all that kind of stuff. I've done a lot of, I, I work with a lot of coaches and mentors and I think it's really important that, you know, yeah, in any business stuff's going to happen. Adversity is going to happen. Challenge is going to be there. There'll always be ups and downs, but it's not about, you know, the growth happens in the valleys. Yeah. And I think you just need to really, you know, if you, if you are listening to this and, you know, things aren't going the way you want them to go, or it's just tough, um, you, you know, it's all what, what's going on between the six inches between your two ears. Ultimately, it's the mindset and how you respond. It's not about, you know, it's not about what happens. It's how you respond to that. And, you know, I could have cried for months and, you know, just got given up and thrown my hands in the air. And I thought, you know what, it actually put fire in my belly. And I just, now I'm like, I just want to, I just wanted to prove him wrong that he made a mistake and that he, you know, that I, you know, that it's hard for me to talk about. So I just, I just, I just know that if you're listening to this and times are a bit crappy that, you know, the adversity has to happen. You have to go through the failures and you just have to pick yourself up and start all over again or pick yourself up and just drive forward. Thank you for sharing that, Sam. That's really, really powerful. And for me, it's the focus on why. And that's what it all boils down to. Why are you doing what you're doing? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, my why is my kids. I've got um, three gorgeous children. Um, Liliana is seven. Uh, Maya is 10 at the moment. And Oscar is 13. And they are my world. And I, you know, I'm so excited for their future. And everything I'm building is for them. And they are so involved in the business as well. Maya is a little baking entrepreneur. She's 10 and she bakes cakes for all of our masterclasses and she, she gets clients from doing that. Um, Oscar is a born driven entrepreneur. I mean, he's not made for education whatsoever. He's already, he's already had a couple of different businesses and he's amazing. And Liliana's like a little mini me. So they are my world and that's why I do what I do. Um, it's what gets me out of bed every day. They've got, um, 
They've each got their own goal boards. They've got vision boards. And we've done that for four years with the kids. So they're, they're you know, they're, they know I'm away quite a lot because obviously with my job and everything I, and my business, I'm not always around. But when I am, I'm, I've got really quality time with them. And they know that their goals are completely linked to me smashing it in my business. So, um, so I think it's really important to have um, the kids involved and understanding what you do in the business and, and getting them involved as young as possible. Absolutely fantastic. So tell me about the mission that you have. What is your goal for the business? So my overriding mission and why I do everything is I have a billion pound target, not for my business, but for my clients. So I am on a mission to generate a billion pounds, that's billion with a B, for my clients by 2025. Um, we're currently tracking at 92.3 million generated for our customers. So whether they are outsourcing to me, whether they've been on a masterclass, whether they've joined my academy, whether they've just read the book and implemented like you have, yeah. you know, I don't honestly care how they've done it. Um, I just want everyone that's out there that's learned from me to just get that result. And I'm, I want to make a huge impact on the world. And I truly believe I can do that with what I share. That's fantastic. I mean, the book for me, it has been gold dust. It's so exciting because I, I'm a, a big book reader. I'm, I've read over oh, 150, coming up to 200 books in the last couple of years, mostly business. I'm a big nonfiction fan. And me your too. book was <laughs> just brilliant because it was it was just a tool. It's a toolbox. You know, you need it in your toolbox. If I would say that's in my top five now because oh, it is wow. going to make a big Amazing. impact. Yeah, and it's going to make a big impact because it is a, a manual of how to – get your content out there to avoid the mistakes that people make and to focus on the, on the content in a consistent way. And there was something that you, you mentioned about people don't use all of the different areas. They get the seven different ways that you can put content out there. Yeah. And tell me a bit more about what those are. So um, there are, well, I, I talk about 14 different themes, which are kind of the ideas for content, but there's seven different types of posts. Uh, the first one is a, just a text only post. So that's a, a nice, easy one. You just write a piece of text. Uh, and actually LinkedIn quite likes those. Um, the algorithm quite likes just text only posts and not very many people do them. Um, the next one is uh, videos. So videos are very popular on LinkedIn, but just bear in mind that 85% of people do not watch their mobile phone and social media without any, uh, with any sound on. So if you are going to do videos, make sure you caption them. The next type of post is photographic. So a, a collage of pictures. Thank goodness LinkedIn now allows us to put more than one picture up. Um, so a collage of photographs is another type of post. You've then got obviously LinkedIn articles. So that's the long form, like a blog within LinkedIn. So if you want to position yourself as an, a bit of an expert, then, then putting an article out there now and again would probably be a good idea. Um, you've also got um, giving kudos. So you can actually recognize somebody in the newsfeed um, that's done a great job. It's different to a recommendation. It's, it's actually a post that gives somebody credit. Um, so if you've got team members, it's quite nice to do that for your team. Or um, if there's someone that's just helped you out or done a great job for you, it's a really nice thing to do. Um, you've also got um, LinkedIn Live. So that is not available to everybody yet. Um, it's an application process. You do need to have a minimum 10,000 connections and you need to be consistently using live on other social media platforms to qualify. But um, it is starting to roll out more. It's still in its beta testing phase. Um, but LinkedIn Live is definitely an area that, um, you know, you'll start to see more and more people using it. Um, and there's one more and I can't, <laughs> I've completely forgotten the other one. You mentioned the PDFs, the, the way that you can... Oh yeah, document posts. That's the one. Yes. My favorite one. My goodness. So <laughs> document posts. Document posts are um, where you can upload a PDF or a slideshow or a Word document and LinkedIn turns it into what looks like a scrolling book. Um, they get massive visibility and they're really, really good for getting lots of views because the LinkedIn algorithm loves them, especially if you put together something that's like 15 to 20 pages. And I'm not talking about lots and lots of words. So I'm talking about like very high level bullet points types things. But, you know, as soon as people start scrolling through to read the document, that just drives the algorithm crazy. And you'll see quite good visibility on document posts, even though you might not get many reactions on them. The people that are engaged with it will, will usually click through all the way to the end. Um, and that drives the algorithm crazy. Yeah, that's a curiosity, isn't it? People just want to know if they yeah. don't miss something and they're like, oh, Yeah, I'm exactly. <laughs> Even if I love how it looks as well. Like, it, you know, the fact that you can just click a button and arrow and it just like turns the page. And um, they're, they're really easy to make. You can just make them on, you know, PowerPoint or 
a Canva or something like that. They're so easy to do. Um, but again, people don't, it's just mixing up. I think it's variety, like giving people different variety, sharing your expertise and giving um, and adding value. Fantastic. So if people want to connect with you, how will they find you on LinkedIn? Uh, well, that's nice and easy. So you can just just type in Sam Rathling. There are only two of us in the world, and one of them is the CEO of an IT company in America who hasn't accepted my invitation, which I'm a bit annoyed about, actually. Um, so go find me on LinkedIn, Sam Rathling. Um, drop me a message and let me know that you listen to Amy's podcast um, so then I know where you came from. And um, if you have any questions or anything like that, then obviously um, just let me know. Drop me a message through LinkedIn. Um, the uh, other things you can do if you want to go, obviously the book is available on Amazon. It's on an ebook and it's also in paperback version. So if you um, feel compelled to go grab a copy after Amy's um, recommendation, thank you, Amy, then um, feel free to go grab a copy of that. I run um, three day masterclasses in uh, Derby in the Midlands. So if you're listening to this in lockdown, they're currently um, online. So I do them through Zoom. Um, if you're listening to this post lockdown, then they are run in person in Derby in the Midlands. And I've also created something called the LinkedIn or Linked Out Academy, where if you prefer to do online learning, um, you can go check out LinkedIn or linked, LinkedIn or linkedout.com and uh, you can go find out details of the Academy, which is 22 learning modules and ongoing support from me. So there's lots of ways to engage. Um, and my final thing that I do is I go in house and do bespoke um, coaching and uh, bespoke training for big companies. Um, and a few people work with me one-on-one, -on -one, but that's a fairly expensive way to, to work with me. Fantastic. And, and if, you, if you are confused between which Sam Raffling, it's the one with the butterfly. Oh yeah, the one with the butterfly. That's right. Oh, I've got a little emoji on my profile. Yeah. So I'm not too difficult to find on LinkedIn. Um, and maybe you can just drop a link to uh, my profile or something in the, in the show notes, Amy. I think it's lovely you've got the butterfly on and I'm sitting here with my butterfly scarf and my butterfly. You are, so on brand. Why, why a butterfly? Tell me, it's, it's intriguing me. So, uh, you know, you guys just heard my story. So when I share that from stage, um, I talk about the four stages of a business and the first stage being the embryonic um, stage where you're just this little tiny egg on a leaf. Um, so if you're listening to this and you're just starting out on your journey of entrepreneurship, then you're just a little egg on a leaf right now. Um, and the egg turns into a hungry caterpillar. So the caterpillar stage is where you're doing what Amy's done, right? She spent all this time learning, learning, learning. She's read 150 nonfiction books on success and business. She's, you know, developed herself massively. She's got around the right people. So that's the caterpillar stage where you're, um, you know, just consuming as much as you can knowledge so that you can really um, execute on that knowledge and take your business to the next level. Now, the adversity piece is when the, when the caterpillars um, goes into the chrysalis. Now, inside a chrysalis, it's a really dark place. It's where all the um, challenges happen. It's where all of the growth happens. It's where the transformation happens. And every one of us has to go through that chrysalis phase in our businesses. And you might have to go through it more than once. I mean, I know I've been through it more than once. And um, you can only then come out the other side and emerge as the best version of yourself. And that's when you become a beautiful butterfly that is ready to take on the world. And when I was doing my research on butterflies, the most interesting fact that I found out is that butterflies can't see their own wings. So they're so amazing and so beautiful and just incredible creatures. And they don't even know how brilliant they are and don't even know how amazing they are. So I liken that to every one of us in business. You know, we don't, we forget how brilliant we are we forget how gifted we are and how talented we are and quite often it's the people around us that we rely on to tell us um you know how amazing we are so if ever you're having a a rough day or a bad day or you just feel like giving up like remember that you just can't see your own wings oh that is such a great metaphor and such a wonderful way to finish this podcast thank thank you so much sam it's been brilliant and, and i know that a lot of people are going to stop using linkedin for looking for their next job they're going to use it for their business instead <laughs> i hope so <laughs> really great Have mission complete <laughs> absolutely the mission continues yes indeed so thank you so much thanks for having me i hope you've enjoyed it and uh you know best of luck with all of you listening in on your social selling journey Thank you for listening to the Focus on Why podcast. I'm Amy Rowlandson, and if you've enjoyed this episode, please leave me a five-star iTunes review. Connect with me on LinkedIn, Instagram, and Facebook, and become a member of the inspiring, uplifting, and positive Focus on Why Facebook group. 
Have a purpose, have a plan, focus on why. 